Good morning, students. Here we come up with another topic of the knee joint, bursa of the knee joint. Now, this bursa of knee joint, there are four bursa anteriorly. So, anteriorly or in front of knee joint, total four bursa. Then, four bursa medial to the knee joint. So, medially, there will be four bursa. Lateral to the knee joint, there will be four bursa. All these bursa are to be discussed in this topic. So therefore, first line diagram, very simple. We are going to draw, this will be the sagittal section. This is the patella sagittal section. Then we are going to draw here the femur. This will be the sagittal section of the femur patellar articular surface of the femur. Over here, we are going to draw the tibia sagittal section. Then we are going to draw the ligamentum patelli and this ligamentum patelli will extend from apex of the patella, it is extending till tubercle of the tibia. And above the patella, we are going to mark here quadriceps femoris muscle. So therefore, bursa in front of the knee joint, very important. The first bursa will be <coughs> pre-patellar bursa, subcutaneous pre-patellar bursa with blue color. I am going to mark. This is present between anterior surface of patella this is the bursa between anterior surface of patella and skin. So therefore, name of this bursa will be, this will be known as pre-patellar bursa between the skin and anterior surface of patella. And the other name of this bursa is, it is routinely, commonly asked in one more question answer MCQ, it is known as housemaid's knee. So housemaid's knee. Sometimes you are asked, what is housemaid's knee? or inflammation of which bursa produces housemaid's knee, it is pre-patellar bursa between anterior surface of patella and the skin. Because of the kneeling down posture of the housemaid during mopping of the floor, the bursa may be inflamed. That is why the name given is housemaid's knee, pre-patellar bursa inflamed. Second bursa will be present, that also subcutaneous, this is subcutaneous pre-patellar bursa, this one also will be subcutaneous between skin and the insertion of ligamentum patelli. So this bursa is present over here between the skin and insertion of ligamentum patelli. This is the bursa. And the name of this bursa will be subcutaneous infrapatellar bursa. So therefore here we are going to name this as subcutaneous infrapatellar bursa. This bursa is routinely inflamed in clergyman, priest, who kneel down to pray. So therefore, routinely it can be asked as, which bursa is known as clergyman's bursa? Because of inflammation of the subcutaneous infrapatellar bursa, which is present between the skin and the lower part of the ligamentum patelli, where it is attached to the tibial tubercle. So this is known as clergyman's bursa that is subcutaneous infrapatellar bursa. Both these bursas are many a times asked as one mark question answer. What is housemaid's knee and what is clergyman's bursa? Third bursa will be present in the deeper portion, deep to ligamentum patelli. And that portion is present here, deep to ligamentum patelli and in front of the tibial condyle. So therefore, the name of that bursa here, I'll mark this bursa. The name of this bursa will be deep infrapatellar bursa. So therefore, this is the third bursa, deep infrapatellar bursa. Present deep to ligamentum patelli. <coughs> Fourth bursa, this is very important. Now this bursa, which I have marked, is once again deep bursa, but it is present between quadriceps femoris and the patellar articular surface of femur. It will extend. Name of this bursa is 
supra patellar bursa so here this will be known as supra patellar bursa and this supra patellar bursa will communicate to the knee joint so i'll put an arrow which will show that it communicates to the knee joint supra patellar bursa so these are the four bursae which are situated in front of the knee joint anterior to the knee joint and this is this can be asked one more question answer also which bursa out of this four will communicate to the knee joint supra patellar bursa <coughs> then we come to the bursa which are related medial and lateral to the knee joint in order to understand that please come on this side we will draw the diagram over here and here we show the diagram this will be the coronal section of femur as well as over here we will show the condyles of tibia so this will be tibia and on one side we are going to draw the fibula so if we draw the fibula on this side here this is where we will show fibula lateral medial so this will be lateral condyle this will be medial condyle again lateral condyle of tibia this will be the medial condyle of tibia now we draw the ligaments now in order to draw the ligaments on the medial side please note down we shall draw the tibial collateral ligament tibial collateral ligament extending from medial epicondyle of femur this is the superficial part and this will be the deep portion and remember between the superficial and deep portion of tibial collateral ligament there will be attachment of one muscle which is known as semi membranosus muscle so therefore the semi membranosus muscle is present over here that we have already discussed tibial collateral ligament the deep portion and the superficial portion now here i am going to highlight this margin this is lateral epicondyle and this is the condyle this is the medial epicondyle sorry not lateral medial epicondyle this is the lateral epicondyle and the condyle now here in front of just in front of the superficial part of tibial collateral ligament there will be presence of sartorius gracilis and semi tendinosus structures these three structures are related here so the presence of sartorius gracilis and semi tendinosus the three structures which are related in front of superficial part of the tibial collateral ligament so here we shall start giving the name superficial part of tibial collateral ligament this will be the deep part of tibial collateral ligament over here this will stand for semi membranosus muscle over here these three structures will stand for the sartorius gracilis semi tendinosus muscles <coughs> now we come to the lateral side here laterally from the lateral epicondyle there will be fibular collateral ligament this is the fibular collateral ligament now present between fibular collateral ligament and capsule so we draw the capsule deep inside and if i show the capsule with the help of yellow color this will be the capsule over here this is the capsule so present between the fibular collateral ligament and capsule there will be the structure which is known as the popliteus muscle so here i am going to draw this structure which will be known as popliteus and finally we are going to mark all these structures first structure over here fibular collateral ligament second structure over here popliteus third structure the capsule and now the bursa very simple to understand by understanding this diagram now it is very simple to understand the bursa the bursa we start with the bursa which are present <coughs> behind the lateral on the lateral side so on the lateral side the first bursa 
which is present will be between gastrocnemius muscle and the capsule. So therefore, I will draw the bursa that is present between gastrocnemius and the capsule here. So this bursa is the first bursa present on the lateral side between lateral head of gastrocnemius muscle and the capsule. So please mark this. This will be our first bursa. Here I have marked between lateral head of gastrocnemius and the capsule on the lateral side. Second bursa, once again on the lateral side, it will be present between biceps femoris muscle and fibular collateral ligament. So the biceps femoris muscle, if I would like to show, this will be the biceps femoris muscle, which is attached here. <coughs> In between biceps femoris and fibular collateral ligament, presence of this bursa will be known as the bursa present between biceps femoris and fibular collateral ligament, second bursa. So the name given will be, you will name this as bursa number 2 on the lateral side. And where is it present? Between biceps femoris muscle and fibular collateral ligament. First bursa is present between the medial head of gastrocnemius and the capsule. Second bursa is present between the biceps femoris muscle and fibular collateral lig ligament. Third bursa will be present between <coughs> the fibular collateral ligament and tendon of popliteus. So therefore, between the fibular collateral ligament and popliteus, this is the presence of third bursa. This is the third bursa. And the fourth bursa is very important because it will communicate with the knee joint. And that fourth bursa will be between tendon of popliteus and lateral condyle of tibia. So between tendon of popliteus and lateral condyle of tibia, it is present here. This is the bursa. And the name of this bursa, we have given it as the fourth bursa. Name, fourth bursa between tendon of popliteus and lateral condyle of tibia, which will communicate with the knee joint. Then we come medially. Now, coming medially on this side, the first bursa will be, just as lateral side, the first bursa will be present between medial head of gastrocnemius and capsule. So medial head of gastrocnemius will be covering this portion. And the bursa, I will mark it over here. This bursa, which I have marked over here, will represent between medial head of gastrocnemius muscle and capsule. Just as the bursa, first bursa on the lateral side between lateral head of gastrocnemius and capsule, same, the first bursa on the medial side between medial head of gastrocnemius and the capsule, and the name given, I will write it as number one on the medial side, between medial head of gastrocnemius and capsule, very easy to understand. Second bursa will be located between sartorius gracilis semitendinosus and superficial part of tibial collateral ligament. So here, I'm going to mark this as second bursa between sartorius gracilis semitendinosus and superficial part of tibial collateral ligament and I'm going to name this as bursa number 2. But remember the location between sartorius gracilis semitendinosus and superficial part of tibial collateral ligament. Bursa number 3 on the medial side between the superficial and deep part of the tibial collateral ligament. So that bursa will be located here between the superficial and deep part of medial collateral ligament. So therefore, this I will name it as bursa number 3. This I will name it as bursa number 3 between superficial and deep part of medial collateral ligament. Now the last one, bursa number 4 will be between semimembranosus muscle and medial condyle of tibia. So therefore, this is between semimembranosus and medial condyle of tibia, which I have drawn over here. So, this will be known as the bursa number 4 between semimembranosus and medial condyle of tibia. Now, this bursa will communicate with the knee joint and along with this fourth bursa between semimembranosus and medial condyle of tibia which communicates to the knee joint, along with that the first bursa which was present between medial head of gastrocnemius and capsule 
will sometimes communicate with the V joint. So therefore, altogether, there are four bursa which communicate with the knee joint. The first bursa in this lateral position will be the bursa which is present between tendon of popliteus and lateral condyle of tibia which communicates to knee joint. Second bursa will be the bursa which is present between the semimembranosus and medial condyle of tibia which communicates to knee joint. Third bursa will be the bursa which is present between the medial head of gastrocnemius and the popliteus which may communicate with knee joint. And the fourth bursa will be, as we have seen over here, supra patellar bursa, which communicates with knee joint. So here we have finished the bursa of the surrounding the knee joint, the entire bursa surrounding the knee joint. Thank you very much.